a few years ago, I don't know how many, maybe <clears throat> nine years ago, um, maybe more like five, I read this book, well, probably whenever it just came out, this book called uh, The Power of No, N-O, or The Power of Saying No. Uh, who was it by? I can't remember the guy's name. Anyways, it was a really good book. Um, interesting and I was one of those people at the time who had a hard time saying no um, that's an issue for a lot of people in this world <laughs> and it's about boundaries it's about not having a voice um, it's about a lot of things but <clears throat> one of the things that I've learned by getting better at saying no is that to get more of what we want, which to me is us walking in what we truly want is our purpose. Our purpose is what we truly want. What we truly want in this world when we get to the base of what it is that we desire and we see what we're pulled towards naturally. Um, in a positive light, right? Because that we can be pulled towards things naturally that are negative for us, and that can teach us lessons. That's for us because it teaches us lessons, but we're not meant to stay in a constant tortured state. Um, it's interesting that we live our lives as if we should live in hell and we put all of our hope towards the future. And yet, look at this beautiful world that was obviously created for us to enjoy. <laughs> and we're conscious creators. We're the only conscious creators on Earth in the physical form. And so we can create anything that we want in this world, including the life that we want. And the life that we desire since we were made in the image of a creator, or if you believe that, if you don't, um, there are other ways to explain it. I kind of believe both in a way. Two things, I believe we were born in an image of a creator. If we want to take that story, it means the same thing to me as if God or the, let's say God was this light that is represented by my arm and this arm is full, like, let's say this arm has um, billions, like, zillions of cells, right? And maybe it does. And each of those cells is a light cell. And so this light breaks off a piece of light cell and whoosh, sends it down into a body. Well, I basically think that's what happens, right? So we're always adding to the collective consciousness no matter what decisions we make, no matter what we do. And even our pain leads us back to God or the spirit or the truest self because without pain, actually, we would never search for anything more. The desire for more, yoga... The Yoga Sutras teach that attachment is where pain comes from, and yet our purpose here on Earth is to be attached and to experience. And so we have to learn to be attached without being tethered, maybe, to things. We have to learn to be able to let go, regardless. Um, this process of saying no teaches that, or it has taught me that part of getting what we want is saying no to what we don't want. And it's good to learn to say no to what we don't want. And that lesson gets harder and harder and harder. So here's what's interesting for me. I said no to the hardest thing in the world to say no to at nine years old. I rejected my parents 
authority over me and their teaching of me because they rejected me thousands of times before that and I realized they were not healthy for me. My dad literally rejected me living with him. <clears throat> so at nine years old, I was able to do something that takes most people a lifetime and perhaps they're never able to say no to their parents to, to take control of their own lives. I took control of my own life. Unfortunately, I'd already believed a lot of really shitty things about myself. Things that were said to me over and over on a daily basis, multi-times a day. And this happened until I graduated. And I stayed in that situation rather than leaving because I also, at that time, at nine years old, took on the responsibility of my brothers and sister. So I got to basically let go of everything that my parents thought of me or the process, I started the process of that at nine years old. That allows me to speak to this process of letting go and saying no to the things that we don't want with a lot of confidence because I've been saying no to what I don't want since even before nine years old. It took a lot for me to get there and my spirit rejected being told what to do. And I became the most rebellious human being you can possibly imagine. And I'm still a rebellious motherfucker today and I'm proud of it. So rebellious that I taught my kids to be very rebellious. <laughs> and now they don't speak to me, but they will. It's just part of the process. It's fine. <laughs> Anyways, be careful what you wish for and enjoy what you get. Truly. That's what I do. Anyways, um, yeah, part of the process of letting go and part of the process of saying no is letting go of what other people think of us. That's a really hard thing for people most people, including myself, because we're created to be a part of a civilization. We're pre not a civil a part of a community. We're created to be with other people. And so not caring what other people think is really hard for us to do because being rejected means we're being rejected from the community and that feels really isolating and really lonely. So community is important and that's one of the reasons that many people don't step out and begin to act as an individual. Yes, people will reject us when we begin to be strange. Look at me. Look at the clothes that I have on. Do you think that me walking through Minnesota and Iowa dressed like this, a guy with weird pants and a pink shirt, goes over well? I actually was once chased down the street by a meth head in Iowa because I was a freak and he wanted to fight me. I know Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It would have went fine for me. I feared for his safety really, taking him to the ground and uh, what I might have to do to subdue someone who is <laughs> a meth addict. It could get very violent. So I actually was able to talk him down. So am I saying that people won't have a really strong reaction to us being an individual? No, I'm not saying that. There are people that will have a super strong reaction. And you know what it is? Your freedom is speaking to them and showing them their prison. And so we become a mirror for people to have to deal with their own issues. And that's why people attack us, not because they think they're wrong. We're bringing their issues out and their concerns out because they see us as a part of the community. And just like when we feel isolated from the community, when the community rejects us, right? Well, when the community loses someone out here, they feel actually insecure also because they feel like if 
this person doesn't think we're right, then maybe we're not. And that's why it's so weird to me that everything comes down to right and wrong in our society. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's part of why the system exists. But right and wrong doesn't work very well because it says that if you're different, you're wrong. Anything that's not right is wrong. But what if... So, you know, have you ever seen a quarter spin? Like if I had a quarter between my fingers, I don't have any... I don't have any coins that I can see with me, but here. Let's just take this and pretend that the two sides are a quarter. This is the heads with the silver and this is tails. And this is the edge of the quarter. So there's three sides of a quarter, right? But if I psh, flick that and spin it and it spins like the earth, psh, then we see many angles of those two or three sides of the quarter. So the truth, if that quarter represents the truth and it represents two sides of a truth, even two sides of a truth have many faces and many angles. And usually there are more than two truths in everything. We seem to get trapped in an either or mindset. And either or doesn't work very well either because there's always a loser. What if we were either or and if? Compromising keeps everyone in an eternal hell. Truth? I heard this the other day. It makes a lot of sense. No one is getting what they truly want in a compromise. So what if we said and, or if, or something different? What if we explored third and fourth and fifth options that worked for everyone? What if we had both our best interests in mind at all times and other people's best interests in mind at all times? Especially those closest to us that we love. And the thing is, is that making people happy is not always in our best interest. Because, just because I'm taking your best interests in mind doesn't mean you're always going to take my best interests in mind. And that's where our universes collide. And that's okay. Because when universes collide, directions change. Sometimes worlds need to be destroyed, and universes need to be destroyed, and our ideas need to be destroyed. And we need to come to a place of deeper understanding. So, the life and death process is a part of the everyday dynamic of life. Every day we find something that is not working, and so it dies. And every day we find something new that works, and so it becomes born. If we try to hold on and stay stagnant all the time, the body from holding on becomes very rigid and stiff. And this is the aging process. This is the process of disease. This is the process of man, humanity, trying to hold on and never change is a human issue. This is why we don't see animals with so much disease. <laughs> animals are not trying to resist change. Humanity is trying to constantly resist change. And yet, change is inevitable. Change is the only thing that we can count on. I remember thinking at one point, when can I rest? When can I stop the healing process? When can I just stop having to do this? 
Well, the answer is never. The process and the cycle just continues over and over and over again. But it does get more fun. <laughs> and I do learn where to put more energy. And so the whole process is more enjoyable. And I'm being called to play more. And the more that we heal, the more that we can play. And healing even becomes playing. If you would, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me some comments, talk to me. I will talk back. Uh, I like to discuss things. I like to talk, obviously. My throat chakra is becoming healthier as I speak more. So talk to me about what you think about this. It's an interesting concept that most people, uh, I don't know. I haven't heard it a lot. So let me know what you think. Take care. I love you guys.